So before they get to those deliberations, of course, we'll have closing arguments. But just before then, you know, there's still this this space of not hearing from a key witness. And that was Donald Trump, right? And he had talked about how he absolutely would testify and then, if necessary, would testify. And Vaughn reporting out, you know, he, he certainly seemed like he would want to testify. Was it the right move, Temedio, for his team to say nope and for him ultimately to relent? I think it was 100 percent the right move. I mean, I think it would have been a complete disaster if he testified. I, I, I don't think you can imagine a witness uh, with more credibility issues than the former president. Um, I mean, he is a well-determined you know, liar, frankly. And I think the fact that Judge Merchan already had limited some of the topics of cross-examination regarding his credibility still left him open. I believe there was six of the 13 topics Judge Merchan said he could be cross-examined on. And I think you would have seen prosecution spend extensive time walking the jury through why the former president was not telling the truth. And I think the more difficult part about that is that I don't know that he would have had the proper demeanor and presentation to handle that kind of vigorous cross-examination and do so well. And we saw in cross-examination, for example, the defense's witness, Costello, didn't handle it exactly, precisely, probably best for the defense. But what do you think the message is that the jury is getting from this major defense witness. I mean, it's a handful, right? I mean, it's, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't a long defense presentation. So, wait, th this person is being confrontational to the prosecution. What is the message that the jury gets? From Donald Trump not testifying? Both. They cannot. And, and from the Costello. And how the defense left it, right? Yeah. So, look, I, from my perspective as a defense attorney, I would not want to have left this on Costello. I would have much preferred to left this on the cross examination of Michael Cohen, specifically when he admits to stealing money from the Trump organization. That would have been my moment. I put my pens down and I say, let's take this to the jury. So, Costello's testimony, I don't really think that added a lot of value. Again, I get the rationale, but it did not have value. As far as Donald Trump not testifying. That is something, and again, as a defense attorney, the jury cannot take that into consideration. The prosecution has the burden. The defendant never has to take the stand. That is their right. And so they're not, they're going to be instructed that they can't make any or draw any conclusions from that. Now, what that means for him on the outside, as far as public perception of his statements versus what ended up happening, that's a different story. But from the perspective of the courtroom, it really shouldn't have any impact on the jury's deliberations. But I do want to say I did win a few bets. Because I said no way right from the beginning. <laughs> you and me both. And I think also, when you talk about the public perception, Donald Trump the candidate versus Donald Trump the defendant, it's important to understand these proceedings are not televised. And so even for Donald Trump to sort of maximize what it would be for people to see him on the stand, that's not an option here. So there's very little to be gained from him taking the stand, not to mention that he's someone who, can tend, who tends to ramble on and go into areas that he does not need to go into and say things that he probably shouldn't say on the stand that is an absolute death wish. I agree with Misty. I would probably wouldn't have put on a case after Michael Cohen's cross-examination, especially if the prosecution gifted me that as their last witness, but they did what they did and we are where we are.